they'll be back in action tonight at PNC Park against the Phillies. And honestly, I can't say I'm looking forward to this. Are you? Good morning. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday, even when I'm in a mood like this. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this one. It's not just Yoshi. It's not just Josh Van Meter and all the other time killers that Ben Charrington's forcing into the lineup right now in the incredibly naive hope that someone somewhere is dumb enough to want to acquire them via trade. Can't even get that one out without laughing. It's the the game sucks, you know? Uh, pardon the crude way of describing it, but it does. It sucks. It's not fun. It's not entertaining. I'm not going to sit here and shake a fist at the passing cloud. I don't believe in it. I tend to live my life in the now and not in the past. So when I say these things, I'm not saying them as if I wish baseball would go back to the way it was, because I don't. I don't at all. Except in one way that very much dovetails with our civilization's present, and that would be to make the games shorter, faster, more engaging. Now, every generation is painted as the short attention span generation. And in each such description, we expect that there will never be anyone who ever reads a book again, you know? And somehow books just keep going. And people do watch long, actually longer than ever, movies. And they do binge watch serials on TV. So it's not as if Everyone can only handle 30 seconds of entertainment at a time. So that's not even what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about here is the movement forward toward the edge of your seat at a ballpark. You know what I'm talking about here. And that involves two separate, but if they work together, concurrent concepts. The first is that the batter needs to get the hell in the box and stay there. Don't let him move one foot out. Don't let him remove the Velcro from his glove for no reason and then strap it back on for no reason whatsoever. If the batter steps out of the box, you call a strike. Period. End of discussion. Everyone will complain about it for a month or two, and then it'll just become part of the game again, the way it was for about a 100 years. And the same goes for the pitch clock, which incidentally is being tested in the minor leagues and is taking a half hour off games. Can you picture current games right now in Major League Baseball being a half hour shorter? And who suffers for it? Nobody. Nobody, not the pitchers, not the hitters, nobody. It's only a positive. And oh, by the way, if it allows the catcher and the pitcher to have less time in dialoguing or bantering back and forth with the game planner that most teams, including the Pirates, now have sitting in the dugout, great, great. I'm perfectly fine with putting the game back completely in the hands of the participants on the field as opposed to the puppeteers off the field. But that's just one component to it. There's another. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun. It's a great meal and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Now this will sound contradictory because 
I just said that I want to see shorter games, but now I'm about to say that I want to see more people on the base paths, which of course makes the games longer. But at least they're more fun. There is nothing that gets you more, here comes that word again, engaged with baseball than when there are people on the base paths. You start thinking of different situations. You start playing manager in your head a little bit. Do I want to bunt this guy over here? Maybe they should hit to the right side. Maybe you put on a steal or a hit and run. You just get more into it rather than sitting there and saying to yourself, boy, I wonder if this hitter is going to hit a home run strike out or draw a walk, just like I wondered before the last 30 hitters in this game. That's that's boring. It's boring even when there's a home run. And it's basically taken the base out of baseball. The whole concept of baseball was invented by that Doubleday guy predicated on the notion that you want to advance along the bases. Dude never even envisioned 400 and 500 foot home runs. He couldn't have. The beauty of the game, the strategy, the symmetry, everything happening in threes, all of this was supposed to be about baseball, which, if it's shorter, quicker, less wasted time, between pitches, and again, I'm blaming equally the pitchers and the hitters, and oh, by the way, the umpires as well for not enforcing existing guidelines on both of those parties, and you twin that with more action, more movement, more steals. Remember steals? More steals. Those are fun. Knock the shift right out of the game. No one will miss it. No one will be able to say in any reasonable way that baseball is losing some purity as a result of it. That would be ridiculous. There's always been a first baseman, a second baseman, a shortstop, and a third baseman since the beginning of time. Yes, there have been shifts well before this era, but they were occasional and dramatic. They weren't the norm. Now you're seeing teams shift in mid at bat, have you seen this? Like after one strike, the third baseman goes running over to the other side of second base. It looks ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And it doesn't do anything for the entertainment value of the game. No fan anywhere wants to sit there and watch someone smack a 95 mile an hour grounder where four infielders are standing. That doesn't mean it has to be like doubles tennis where everybody needs to stay inside their box at the serve, but it does mean that to make it more fun again. It sucks right now. When we come back, J1 Pew. duties are that can't be done by Don Kelly, Andy Haynes, and or Oscar Marine. The team seems to be overloaded with coaches, assistants, and consultants relative to the results that we're getting. I love this question. I just do. I'm sorry, especially when I'm already in a mood like this. The Pirates have And I referenced this briefly, and coincidentally, I might add, in the opening segment. A game planning coach. What is a game planning coach? It sounds like a football thing. It probably should be a football thing. It's mostly about pitch sequencing. There's one person on the staff, in this case, Haddad, who studies the way the opponent attacks you or the way the opponent is to be attacked. It is mostly aimed at the Pirates' battery for the night, meaning the pitcher and the catcher. Now, this had been, in the past, the domain of the catcher, primarily. 
not exclusively. They would send signals from the dugout, uh, not just for things like pitch outs and throwdowns and stuff like that. It was, you know, let's pitch this guy a certain way. And the Pirates were blessed to have had Jacob Stallings, who could handle all of those things and so much more and hit around 250 or 260, which, of course, he isn't doing currently in Miami. Really, really struggling this season. Sad to see. But in Pittsburgh, Stallings could do all of that. Jake was Mr. Everything. And it can't be a coincidence that the game planning coach didn't exist until after Stallings was traded. What does Haddad do that any of these other gentlemen that you mentioned can't do? Obviously nothing. Baseball was just fine for a century and a half without game planning coaches, okay? It probably would be fine for the next century and a half without them either. And for that matter, the signing of Roberto Perez, a gold glove winner himself, like Stallings, he was going to be just fine with the pitching staff, and he probably wasn't going to be all that whatever about getting hints and clues and tips from the game planning coach. Now, Roberto never told me that, but I, I know from having spent a lot of time with him, in Bradenton especially, that his relationships that he was forming in spring training were with the pitchers. And when he was putting down a pitch, trust me, he was putting down a pitch. And when the pitcher was out there shaking off that pitch, trust me, it was the pitcher shaking off that pitch. So to what extent Radley Haddad has had any impact whatsoever on the Pirates, I'm not sure I'd want to know, considering a lot of what we've seen this summer. But I also think that it'd be really hard to measure it this year for the simple fact that Perez obviously hasn't been around. And you've seen Taylor Heineman and Jason DeLay and Michael Perez and these other guys. Well, well Perez is a, a, is a veteran, so he was able to call his own games, I'm sure. But I don't know with these other guys. Look, you and I have seen some awful, awful pitch choices at awful, awful times. So I'm not sure I'd be putting this season on my resume if I were Radley had that, presuming that anybody listens to him at all. I appreciate the question. Probably not the answer you were expecting. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. And we'll have another one of these tomorrow. 